666. A little bit different video here. We're talking about whoops, and I don't usually do that, mainly because I take my whoops and I just leave them, throw batteries through them, and just fly them, and I don't do much to them. But I did something a little different here, where this is a uh, pusher uh, concept with a top mount battery and horizontal mount battery, and kind of finished off with the <clears throat> little tiny zip tie canopy. I built this on the B Brain brushless um, board, and the reason I built it on that is because when I initially had done this, so where, where did this build come out of? So um, the where, where it came out of was initially I saw this post by Patrick J. Clark, and he was kind of wishing for a pusher style in a 65 millimeter format. I think he actually wanted bigger props on it, but couldn't quite deliver all of it. But anyways, there's, there's still this idea out there that the Tiny Hawk flies really well because it's a pusher. And so there was that. And then um, on RC Group's uh, Spezzy Lover posted a... Um, uh, a video of a meter 65 that they built up um, upside down and they kept the battery on the bottom but I figured why do that why not just throw the battery up here and so this totally changes um, you know you, you've got clean air coming off the props with zero obstruction um, and then you've got your your center of mass your weight distribution totally changed and compared to the to the regular whips and I'm not sure how honestly how much of a difference that makes because I've been flying brushed and going from this to this is such a big change all by itself that I don't know how much the structural changes here are actually making a difference. With that said, I have noticed some um, definite benefits that I can definitely say are benefits. Um, one of those is that with this versus the Guru Canopy, I'm saving I think at least half gram, maybe 0.75 grams. Um, in weight and with thinner zip ties you can actually get that down that weight down even further um, the other thing I'm noticing that's different is and granted this is brushed um, so the brushless is going to be a little bit less lower profile but even if you compare this to the brushless setup just your your height your profile is so much smaller and so where I've noticed a big difference in flying is being able to get through uh, tight vertical gaps so if the gap is very narrow vertically this thing it just it's got no like no frontal profile so you just fit in spaces that are much harder to get through um, so those there's definite differences there but I'm kind of saying that this is a concept build because I don't know if um, people are willing to tolerate the sketchiness of the board at the bottom and um, and whether it makes enough like true flight difference to where it's worth the hassle. Maybe if you just want to fly something different, absolutely it's worth the hassle because that's pretty damn different. Um, also, so DVR, I put a little DVR to start, just a little bit of chair slalom on there. Um, I'm not a big fan of just doing like, here's the tour of my house, so I won't really post much other DVR of it. The other thing is, is that the B-Brain brushless is just uh, the way it comes, it's, it's just kind of heavy. So with these gold motors, 18,000 kV motors, you're toting around a lot of weight. So this, the way it is right now, is like 22 um, grams, 22.5 grams, or something like that. Um, and you're flying it with at least a 300 milliamp battery. So it's pretty heavy. Um, I agree with Patrick J. Clark. Probably this needs the plaid motors, 20,000 kV. And my batteries are struggling. And, and granted, these are pretty old. These are, I got... RDQ and GMB 300s, and I've beat these up. These are old batteries, so um, I, I think I need to go out and buy some uh, new batteries to see what this really does. Um, and, and so, <laughs> which is kind of funny, because I, when I bought this, I was intending to just do this, do a video, kind of show people what you can do with it, and then pull it apart and then go ahead and swap it over into an open prop build, you know, something like this. And the reason I did that is because I kind of wanted one solution board where you could do 1S, 2S, camera's a plug, and it's got little tiny um, pads that you can potentially solder your motors to. Um, and so it seemed, and the VTX is built in, so you just have a receiver, so just three, three wires to solder. So it seemed like a real appealing um, board to go ahead and throw into this kind of stuff. But, um, I like the way this flies enough. I may actually keep it. I'm going to actually spend the money to go get the batteries and go get the motors and have a little um, brush brushless indoor whoop, even though that the board's a little too heavy and whatnot. But 
it does fly different enough than this guy that I, I like it. Okay, so that's sort of, I guess I just bundled it in a super quick uh, B-Bang brushless review, which is too damn heavy. Uh, I don't know what they're thinking. Um, oh, by the way, definitely throw Project Mockingbird on this. That made, uh, and 48 kilohertz, it made a world of difference. Um, this thing flew horrible in stock and then was a whole lot better afterwards. Um, what else on it? Oh, the one issue with 48 kilohertz, I'm getting some, it's battery dependent. I think it's a current issue. Uh, I get some VTX issues with, with screen roll. So if I throw in one of my really bad batteries, it's unflyable because I get screen roll with my better batteries. It seems to do okay. Um, but know that that's a possible issue. And so, um, okay. But if you want to do this, so if you want to build it, um, I've had some videos of the uh, zip tie canopy builds and this just follows right off of that. So you can see you got zip ties coming in uh, from the bottom and they exit upward and then zip ties coming from the back and they exit forward. On these bottom zip ties, I go around both of those struts. So you can see here how there's two, two struts and I go around both of them. What that lets me do is make a little shelf. And so you can see on the bottom, instead of using my usual um, heat shrink on the bottom of the camera, I'm just resting it on that bottom plastic that, that's made, that little shelf that's made from the zip tie. And I'm only using the um, shrink wrap on the top part of it there. And then um, I cut these short mainly because it looks clean, but you can leave these. If you want more camera protection, you can leave these extended with the little devil horns. And so that way you get some camera protection if you want it. And so if you're not familiar with this, um, then the way I'll, this will kind of show you a little bit better how, um, how this builds up. But so this is uh, obviously an open prop build, but basically you can see here. So that's the way the zip tie goes in. Um, it wraps around and ed exits upwards. And then what you're doing is when, so obviously these are bent now, but before they're bent, what you gotta do is measure it out where you want it. So what you do is you sit your camera in there and you kind of get it to where, where it's gonna be. And you measure it out and you find where you wanna make that bend. And then you just go ahead and um, fold that down increase it real good on both sides. And that's what gives you that nice little um, secure at the top. And then once you have that bend, then what you do is you go ahead and you take your, um, this is just plain shrink tubing. And so that slides onto here. And so when your camera's in place, then you take your sh shrink tubing and slide it down into place. And that's what holds the camera in from the top. And so you can see that the shrink tubing goes around the PCB board with the camera. Okay. So then once you have your camera mounted in there, what you wanna do is flex it to get your angle. And so you measure on um, this piece coming back and you trim it at the distance you want to maintain the angle of the camera that you want. And then the ones coming from the back, those those are the ones that sit on top. And then so you put on, this is just another uh, layer of shrink tubing. So you put on your shrink tubing here. And then the way this fits together, let's get the front one here, is that the zip tie coming from the front sits on the bottom. And the zip tie coming from the back sits on top. And it just slides in. And this one's already like preheated and molded and whatnot, but um, what I found on this one here is I had a shrink tubing that was just the right width to where it just had enough stretch and I didn't actually have to heat shrink it. But that just kind of goes down like that. And so you can see how this, um, Kind of all sits together and see this one has a double horn still on there so this is just a bigger version of what's on here and on this one i didn't to save some weight i didn't go all the way back i just stopped right there at the camera or at the battery mount and that worked out pretty well it's super sturdy um, no jello or anything like that 
And yeah, it doesn't have the protection, but that camera sits pretty darn low. Um, so you can see it, get, it gets kind of some protection from uh, just motor line. Anyways. All right. So there it is. Um, quad 66, pusher 66, um, pusher top mount um, concept. Uh, hope that is interesting to you. Until next time, cheers.